everybody my name is Karen Fire and welcome back to New World. Today I'm going to be doing a video on the Starstone Barrows. This is the second expedition you'll be doing in New World, the second dungeon you'll be going into and uh, this one is quite a treat. Now the damage types goes as follows so in here you're going to come across a lot of skeleton types. You've probably already seen them around the world but you got skeletons that have archery, javelins, swords and all sorts in here and you got mini bosses and all sorts so in this step by step guide I'm going to be showing you um, all the parts of this dungeon all the mechanics that you need to know about the mob types, what they're weak to etc and hopefully this uh, helps you out while you're going in here it's a very enjoyable dungeon to do it's actually quite a bit easier than Amorine I'm not going to lie especially when it comes to the last boss um, it's a very nice one to tank just make sure you've got your proper team ready. You've got your healer. Um, you want a tank. And then you can have... Uh, I'd probably recommend just healer tank, free DPS. And that's absolutely brilliant for this dungeon. Kind of similar formula to the other one. Um, but you definitely don't need a couple of healers in here. Because it's, it's quite good. As long as you've got one good healer, you should be absolutely fine. Just make sure you're bringing plenty of potions. Plenty of food. And if you're a healer or someone who's using a lot of magic, make sure you bring some mana potions. So to find these Starstone Barrows, you actually come to Everfall on the map and it's in these ancient ruins. You've probably already been to these ancient ruins before in some missions that you were required to go here, but it's right here on the map. Now, its damage types work very similar to Amrine. So um, in here, you got monster type of Ancients. They're weak to strike and lightning and they resist slash fire and nature damage. So if we check them out a little further, you can see what they're weak to, what they resist. They resist the slash of a straight sword. Um, they also don't like nature and they resist fire too. But they are weak to that warhammer. So somebody with a warhammer build in here could absolutely bang. Make sure you get a DPS that has that. Um, it's not necessary, but it would be very nice. And if you can get a lightning gem on there, go ahead and slap that in. Um, that will help you out a bunch. I myself in this dungeon am a uh, ice gauntlet and a hatchet main. So my hatchet did some blue damage numbers here in this dungeon, um, which wasn't too good. But as long as I went for the back on these skeletons, I did just fine for damage here. That and um, with a hatchet, you put in a lot of fast damage anyway. So you end up racking lots of points anyway. So that worked out pretty well for me. Um, you know, in the end, it worked out OK. Um, that and the uh, AOE damage was very nice going through these hallways. So it was a very straight passage when you come through at first. But when you get towards the middle of this dungeon, that's when it starts getting very confusing because you have to do like a kind of maze going back and forth movement when we get there. But when we get there, we'll talk about it a little bit more. But at some point, you're going to reach this corridor. And as you can see, there is a big door at the end. You want to get rid of the mobs coming down this bridge. You can probably attract a few and uh, catch them off in there. So you come up to the door, use an Azov staff to unlock the door and then carry on through the dungeon. This dungeon actually has way more respawn points than Amrine does as well. So that's kind of handy. One thing I want to warn you about as well is often or not in Starstone, you do get piled on. So um, it's not always possible to just drag one or two off. Sometimes you end up just dragging massive piles off. And that's when it's very important to have a very good healer because... That person is going to need to heal for the damage. Make sure you group up in the healer's bubble to make it an easier job for them. And uh, then you can go ahead and gang up on the skeletons in one go. Because if you don't do this and you're all separate, you're going to make the healer's job very difficult. And it doesn't work out very well. So usually it's good to kind of gang up in this situation when there's a bunch of them, as you can see in this next section. There's a bunch of crawlers, there's a bunch of sword guys, and they're all together. And sometimes you might get more than this as well. Once you've finished out this room, you need to go to the left-hand side and go through the lasers. Now, the way to do this is by crawling. My crawl key is on Z or Z, depending on where you're from. And you go ahead and roll underneath, or you can just crawl underneath. Otherwise, like what happened to Raph on my screen, you will die. And then whenever someone tries to revive you, you're going to land in the lasers again, and you're going to have to respawn anyway. So um, make sure you've got to crawl under these or dodge the lasers because otherwise you're going to be a dead man but once you're past that um here comes your first chest here you can go ahead and grab that by the respawn point and then you have another room of ads to clear and some more lasers to duck underneath 
one thing i gotta say with the lasers is be careful that you're not auto running into these because um i've rebranded my auto walk to shift aka my run key because that just feels better for me um but you're gonna want to make sure that you uh, don't auto run otherwise you're gonna do a silly like i did and i walk into lasers because i can't turn it off in time <laughs> You come into this big old room and you're going to see tons of lasers. Those who are not very good at kind of puzzles like this, you'll be like, oh God, a laser room. Oh goodness me. <laughs> but just don't let people rush you on this one. Take your time. You don't need to rush this area. If you rush, you're going to end up probably killing yourself more than you would by taking it slowly. So take it slowly. We'll wait for them to come up and then we'll go underneath. So you can see this part. It's got a blockage. We definitely can't go through that without the staff. But there's a little passage we can take underneath here. I'm going to slowly take it over here and then hop up here. Watch our head as well. Make sure we're ducking just in case it's going to hit us. And then we are moving on past that. Now you can go into different areas in this room and farm ore and stuff like that. But you don't necessarily need to do that. You can just take the path I've shown you here and it will take you directly there. And then you can continue more to the other side where the door is. Watch the mean archers. Like I was saying earlier about archery skeletons, they hit very hard. And as you can see, um, they're hitting me very hard as well. For level as well, I forgot to mention, but it does unlock at 30, but it's recommended 35. I was 33 for this expedition. Someone was 30 in my team and they were doing absolutely fine. But I would recommend maybe a midpoint between the two might be a little bit better for you just in case. However, totally doable at 30 and uh, you can go ahead and do it that way. Um, 35 keeps you safe though. So you come into this area and you can see a shrine. These things are going to be important. We're going to go ahead, we're going to go dive over. It's a little bit gut-wrenching diving over the, all of these holes. Someone's going to pick up the altar off the stand. Stairs are going to come out for extra people and you're going to see there's a bubble around this guy who picked up the staff. This is going to allow you to go through lasers and it's going to be needed for several parts of the dungeon. So you're going to wait, make sure you want to get all your team through. Otherwise, you're going to have people that can't follow you. So make sure you do that before you leave them high and dry. Or if it does disappear and you're on your own, you can always pick it up yourself and open the door for yourself. Um, but of course, teamwork makes the dream work in this case. So we're going to continue on and we've got more laser walls with some mobs in between. It's going to be the same scenario of duck, dodge and weave and kill in between. Once you've come out of that corridor, you're going to come into a big room with some watercress on the side. Sorry, rivercress. Kind of looks like that anyway. <laughs> but in this room, it's a huge landscape kind of room. And there's going to be a lot of archers. We want to focus the archers first and then go for the rest of the crowd. Otherwise, they're going to be very painful. Um, you're going to get ganged on in this room as well. That's a warning in here because um, there's a lot of mobs consolidated into one space so anything aoe hammer here will also be useful again and you can go ahead and get rid of these skeletons and you're going to notice there's mini boss skeletons here's our first one coming into play her name is ioan i think i'm, I'm gonna butcher it but we'll just call her ioan <laughs> uh, i'm sorry <laughs> But she's going to be your little uh, mini boss. You just defeat her. She's not too bad. Um, it's mostly just hack and slash. She doesn't do anything too special. One thing I have noticed with these mini bosses though in this dungeon is if you ever see them put big purple pools on the floor, do not stand in them. They will hurt you a lot. And I mean a lot. It's kind of like standing in the fire of the ghost from the last dungeon that's exactly what it does however disregard this for the final boss because he also well, sorry she also does spawn big purple circles but they don't do the same as the mini bosses do in this area they will shoot purple balls at you and put purple balls on the floor head up the stairs defeating the ads on the way you're going to have even more ads um, you have some more harvestables and you can come around to the other place over here where you can kill some more ads but more importantly, you got uh, the next place we're going through. You will need to, though, fight another boss, a mini boss, before you come through this door. And this is a spear thrower, so uh, be warned on that one. They can be a bit painful because they do jump and launch at you and all sorts. Once you've defeated the dough, you can now come on and continue. And you have your crag there, you have some more enemies and you have the door. Someone will need to use their Azov staff to be able to open this door once more. 
and you can go into the next room here from now and in this room you have another respawn point you're going to continue you're going to open a chest in here as well you're going to have some more ads and it's an absolutely massive room again in here so clear out those ads and then you can go ahead and continue into the large room um where you're going to want to get some rid of some more ads because they're absolutely everywhere once you've killed those head up the stairs though towards the altar with the big square and you want to go to the left hand side not the right with the lasers so go to the left for the first time you're going to be coming back to those lasers later on so this is the room where things tend to get confusing okay just warning you now so we're going to go across we're going to come down the stairs on the other side as you can see on the map we are around about there and we got some more ads to clear out right here so you can pull a few actually in this group and then deal with the ones at the back we also got another mini boss once those have been defeated you can go ahead and open the ancient azov seal with a azov staff and continue into the next room now this is the room with the final boss door but you actually need to do some other stuff before you can actually open the door so the door is right in front of you once you've gone past the uh, respawn point and it's very obvious for a boss door you know it's a boss door but first we're going to be clearing the ads out of this room and then instead of going through the boss door we have to do some work we need to go down the uh, right hand side so you open that door on the right hand side with the azov stuff once more and you can go through to the next area so you can see how important an azov stuff is to do this one although you should already have it by the time you come here anyway um, you've got another hallway full of spearmen you're going to have to get rid of before you can travel any, any further in this area. So we want to get rid of those. And then we can continue further on and we've got even more ads throughout the corridor. So let me get rid of those. Once you've gone down this whole corridor, you're going to come to this place with a purple shrine. So aka, you got to open some more laser gates. But first you've got to go through another scenario of some ads. And a uh, mini boss is also going to be here again. There's quite a few of them. Um, they're not that special. They just have a little bit more health and sometimes some abilities. So like this mini boss here is when you get to see the first lot of purple circles on the floor that you need to avoid because they kill you very, very quickly. And you can see they spawn them now and again and throw purple balls. And ideally, you don't want to stand in them. You kind of want to miss them because that's going to be what's going to hurt you the most. Even if there's a healer circle on the ground, and it's right over the purple circle you you want to get out of the purple circle it's going to be a pain in the ass otherwise but um defeat that one as you can see also that one is giving you a little bit of an introduction on uh, what our next mini boss is going to be like because it's spawning things as well so get that one killed off as quickly as possible grab the azov staff go through the laser door get your team through there first as well and continue on kill some more ads and then we got to dodge some more lasers in the next part so we're going to dodge the laser, respawn point activated, and come into our next very important room. Clear a few ads out of the way. Get as many ads as out of the way as possible that you can before aggroing the mini boss by the shrine. And this is going to be important here. This is where you can waste a lot of time. Um, this mini boss in particular shoots purple balls, shoots purple circles, and spawns things in all the time. So um, this could be pretty brutal because it could be like a never-ending cycle. Now, the one person in our team here did recommend one person can only go near this uh, mini boss. However, me and a guy just found this was lasting way too long. So we decided to just keep hacking at that boss. You always want someone hacking at the boss because they're going to spawn endless hordes anyway. So you need someone there to at least damage this boss and get some progress because you're never going to get on otherwise. So keep hacking at this boss. It does have a mighty health pool. Maybe you have your tank and a DPS with this boss or your tank will have to um, do the horde actually. Um, so maybe a couple of DPS on the boss and maybe a healer is just keeping an eye on them now and again. This is probably where you're going to get some first team deaths as well. It's more than likely this boss uh, mini boss is pretty brutal. Um, probably more brutal than the final boss actually funny enough um, it's more like the final boss than the final boss of this dungeon so if you can get rid of this one uh, you can definitely get rid of the final boss more than likely so keep at it and you'll eventually get this one down either way um, you could do it <laughs> once you got past that one you can see an altar keep mind for that for later collect the chest by the stairs and then um, go down further and you've got another um, altar with the staff to go through the lasers and you have to go through the area you've already been through 
So let's clear these ads out the way and then we're going to grab the laser and continue onwards. So you grab the staff, they let your people through again, all of them, and you want to get ready to go through the next set of three. And you go into that room and this room you do need to go in. Um, you've got some more chests in here and this chest is going to contain another orb. Now you need like a couple of these orbs to off the power and it's basically like a key for the main door for the boss. So you do need to come in this room, you cannot avoid it. Collect from the chest, get that orb that you need, go back through, and you'll be going up the stairs from now. Um, so you'll go up the stairs and you'll be going to the left hand side like you didn't before. And you can see there is a terminal there, which you use your staff on. Turn it off and then continue back through. You want to go back on the right hand side now, once you've gone back down the stairs, um, past the altar, and back up to the area with that evil boss that you were defeating just a while ago. Now, um, there are some more ads, and now once you've uh, tuned that there, you actually will have to go all the way back through and defeat some more ads to get through this. So, back the way you came, you're going back through this area to get back to the main door, because the other door closed on you, but at least all the lasers are off, right, for now. But anyway, just reverse what you were doing a few minutes ago, and let's go back through this area and defeat a bunch of mobs once we get to the main door again. So here we go, we're back in the antechamber. Took a little while, got some more mobs here as well to get rid of again. Um, I don't know where they came from, but they seem to reanimate themselves in here. And that's exactly what the main boss is going to do as well. Because the next boss has a couple of phases. So you actually need the person who tuned the orb in the altar to open the door. So whoever did that needs to come to the door and open it, because if you don't have it, you can't insert the uh, key in there. So you need the person who did it to do the door. So we'll wait for this person to realize and open the door for us. And then we can continue onwards. I was just making sure there's no additional loot left behind. And that's the door open. Now this is our little respawn point just before the boss. So we're going to go ahead and trigger that. And here is the boss room. Very obvious boss room. So this happens in a couple of phases. On phase one... You want to go after the bones that it spawns because when she spawns these uh, bones they're actually going to spawn more mobs on you now these mobs don't seem to be as strong as the one in the dungeons they're a lot more squishy however if they really start building up there'll be a major problem so you want at least a few people focusing on the bone spawns you don't need everybody to do that um i found two people were just enough or one person sometimes i was just doing them on myself like by myself or, well, these bones will spawn next to the boss and we'll be hacking the bone and the boss or the bone and the ads. But make sure you get those bones. Those are the first priority. And then uh, you can continue hacking at the boss. This boss is awesome. She's amazing. Um, I really enjoyed this fight, actually, fighting this one. In comparison to Amrine, which is a bit of a pain in the ass, especially for a first one, it's pretty brutal for people, especially for new parties. But she's pretty brutal with that sword. Your tank's going to have a good job cut out for them. However, doesn't really hurt awfully too much. Make sure your healer is healing you in big circles. Staying in a cluster actually helps as well in this fight. So if you're all clusters up together, um, you're staying in that circle. So you're always going to get healing. Grab those bones, defeat those mobs. And as you can see on screen, actually, they do seem to go down a little bit easier than they were when we were just going through the levels to get to this room originally. So get rid of those keep following the boss now she does do these ground slams and pounces and slashes so beware of that um she go ahead and do that if she gets one off on you then it can hurt quite a bit um heal back up she's going to spawn another bone and she's going to spawn quite a few of these until you killed her now it might seem like her health is buttery smooth right and uh you might think this is the well the final thing and she's done but no, once you've killed her the first time, she actually reanimates and gets straight back up again. And this is when you're going to have to do some different stuff because she starts amping up her attacks a bit more. So you got the bone bit done, you defeat the bones, you've flashed her health away, and now comes the next part. So for this next part, she's fallen over the floor, she's like all in bits, and immediately she starts glowing again and coming back together. It is not the end. She is back awake and she's going to blast your ass. <laughs> so this is when it becomes apparent that the healer, you need to all stick together. Healer needs to put the uh, healing orbs on the floor. So you need the nice healing circle bubble. And stick together. Don't be afraid of her. 
she might be mean coming down and slamming like that but just make sure you just keep following her around and hacking at her as much as possible at some point she'll stop pouncing everywhere and being annoying and she'll put some more bones in the floor and you want to make sure you kill those bones you get about two at a time or three at a time bones put in the floor um defeat those bones while you're hacking at her because otherwise it's going to spawn more ads and make sure you're hacking at the boss as well at the same time or keeping an eye on it um once those are all removed she's going to slash for a while just like she was previously and then she's going to go back to ground slamming people again so healer's job is awesomely important here um of course because of those ground slams um dodge back come back into it and keep fighting her and she just spawned some more bones in from what i realized she seemed to spawn the bones probably about three times in my encounter if it lasted longer then she probably would spawn more bones but for this fight it didn't actually last too long um for this final boss fight it was quite smooth we actually did it in the first um go as well which was really nice it's a pretty good team so we got rid of her she's going to continue doing those grand slams she's going to continue planting bones in the floor and doing all of that nonsense and uh, just continue repeating so remember healer put your circles on the floor cluster up on the point of healing and cluster up on the boss at all times you always want to go after her and make sure you keep those bones in check and that's pretty much the rules when it comes to this fight um it's pretty easy going that way there's nothing really complicated about it um just make sure you get rid of those bones and etc but once you killed her she's gonna fall over onto the floor everybody's gonna be happy she's gonna drop a bag you want to go ahead and pick that up you don't actually need to go and insert any gems or anything like you did previously for this on the other one all you need to do is grab her bag and then go up the stairs where the lasers were previously and pick up your reward chest and then you can go ahead and teleport straight out of here now i do recommend if you uh if you like before coming in here grab some faction missions as well for the barrows because this is going to help you know up your xp a little bit more and grab all the missions that you can for it if it does have it offered to you so there you go very nice i'm encumbered with all my loot it's been a very good day in the starstone barrows um this probably took me about under an hour probably took me about 40 minutes to run this dungeon um with some afk breaks included so it might take you i don't know 35 minutes to run this dungeon or 30 minutes at optimal speed however it takes a little bit longer then that's no worries so just set yourself an hour aside to do this just in case especially if you're new and you should breeze for it just fine and i wish you the best of luck doing this dungeon but anyway thank you for watching i love you all and i'll see you in the next one bye bye